We live in an increasingly automated world, but some things still require tedious manual work. Save time automating your shipping and returns in the ShipStation dashboard whilst keeping costs down with the industry-leading discounts. Spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping with your ships with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use the code JIM today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code JIM. Bob Denver, Austin Butler, Dubai Jones, which one isn't real? I'm having a go here. <laughs> What are you doing, people named after cities? Yeah, and then I got lost my way. <laughs> Wait, and I didn't even go John Denver. I went Bob Denver, yeah. the star of Gilligan's Island. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I was confused <laughs> right out of the gate. <laughs> who, who talks about Bob Denver? When you said Bob Denver, I thought you were going to say John Denver. Yeah, Isn't me that too. Awesome? <laughs> yeah. I was trying to figure out the relation. No, I know. I know but Dubai I know, Jones is that guy who had the documentary. Ever, if we ever do an episode on John Denver, I'm going to smash the shit out of it. Are you? I'm throwing a gauntlet out. I know everything about... <laughs> The Beatles, we done them? No. Nah, the Beatles, trying. I'll do well. I'll do well on John Denver. And I think I'll do... I did it's all. not good when you do well. When we did Star Wars, I had to write questions that were hard. They were very hard. Yeah, yeah. So yeah those were hard. hard. Yeah, very hard. Yeah, yeah. yeah. What, what have you got for us, stuff. Jack? What have you got for us? I was at the wait, Grove wait, yesterday. Wait, there's not anyone named after a city? Austin Butler. No, there's not a third? No, I was Dubai trying to... Dubai Jones. Do, yeah, Dubai <laughs> Jones. <yeah. laughs> Dubai Jones. There's, I mean, I'm just wondering, is there any other city? Yeah, but I had to do... I know there's other people with cities. Who? I can't uh, think Paris of Bro- Hilton? Brooklyn Beckham. Paris Hilton. There you go. There you go. Uh, Sydney Portier. Sydney Portier. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> Duncan <laughs> Idaho. <laughs> All right. What's going on over I was here? at the Grove yesterday. Madison. Yeah. Cleveland, like from Wisconsin. Family Guy. Yeah. Even from the Family Guy. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> There's other Clevelands. There was a football player named Cleveland Gary. I remember. Yeah. I was at the Grove yesterday, and they were handing out. Uh, anyway, yeah. <laughs> London Keys, the yeah. porn star. I was uh, at that one. So I was at the Grove yesterday. Wait, you want to go home? Why? <laughs> I was at the goddamn Grove yesterday, and they're handing out free cokes that were League of Legends. Oh wait, themed. wait! This segment's later. Can you put these? <laughs> yeah. These didn't go in the freezer. These just went in the fridge, didn't they, Jake? But we were—I didn't want them to freeze over for an hour. It wouldn't have. It wouldn't have. <laughs> these, it temperature would, it would have control. Been, it would have been problems. right to the temperature it needed. This is fucking. Yeah. This is not cold enough. You, you didn't pay attention to. The, you didn't follow instructions. You, I ignored you. Know, you. Jack, you know how much I like things to be really cold. I don't want this shit to explode. <laughs> it, this is an limited hour edition. The freezer. The can it doesn't like, happen yeah, in an hour. Yeah, it doesn't happen in an hour. I don't know. How many times? Not even an hour. Total yeah, misstep yeah, yeah, on yeah, your it's part. About 45 minutes. <laughs> 45 Look, minutes. anyway, the League of Legends. It would have been perfect. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and if you wrapped them in cold paper cold towel, they would have yeah, been yeah. even better. It's, ah, yes. Oh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's terrible. Dis- it's disappointing to the touch. It's 97 degrees. Care, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is like 65 If this degrees. was chocolate coated, it'd be melting. <laughs> right? like, we're like the air conditioned. <laughs> is this, this is just normal Coke Zero. No, it's, is- it's, it's, it's League of Legends themed so what's, it has a le- pl- what's a league of legends it's a video game and it has plus xp flavor so, so it's like one of those funky coke flavors zero like sugar creations that we yeah, tried yeah, earlier try just anytime you see coca-cola you gravitate towards it huh they were giving it out for free that's disgusting <laughs> i don't like that it's not good all. oh my god it's terrible yeah it's bad <laughs> yeah that's why'd bad. you give this to that's us a bad i thought you'd like it <laughs> well that's you a, just said it's a, bad yeah, it's it's a, i'm trying to like point. pinpoint what the <laughs> extra so, flavor so is so jack was walking along the other day wearing his coca-cola hat telling the story jack. <laughs> <laughs> you tell him the story jack. i was wearing my coca-cola hat oh, from the other the, episode yeah. yeah yeah he has a coca-cola hat so I was wearing my Coca-Cola hat walking down the street and then a big Coca-Cola big rig is driving by and I salute the driver and he salutes me back. Mm. Yeah. And so originally when he told this story, he Jack. told it to Forrest and Forrest said, don't ever tell that story again. Jack's- and when Jim got here, I said, Jack, tell Jim the Coke story. <laughs> and Jim thought it was lovely. I thought yeah. it was a light. Yeah, <laughs> I, think um, I think it's lovely. He saluted, he saluted, and the guy was like, "Look at that simple-minded That's fool!" Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> he, he's like, he's, and he's like, he's like, "All right, big guy, all right, gentle big, Jack, yeah. all right, big buddy." He looks like he's yeah. twenty-five, but he's acting like he's eight. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. He told the story later. I saw a special needs kid on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> he saluted me, and so I had to salute him back. <laughs> Seems like the right thing to do. He was all alone. He must be looking for his parents. <laughs> 
he was carrying these crappy cokes. <laughs> <laughs> Ultimate legal gross disgusting yeah i hope no one paid to transport these this yeah, is an environmental plus the I'm xp flavor <laughs> you guys are both gonna chug it uh, no, there's, a, there's, a, there's a flavor that i can't put it's, my finger it's like on. a really artificially yeah. cherry-ish or like it, oh it's terrible it's yeah it's yeah maybe even very had, maybe sweet. if it had sugar in it it would be all right maybe if it's Cause colder because it's, yeah, yeah, it's colder it would take on a life of its own you're really good <laughs> <laughs> but but at this warm, no sugar temperature. Honestly, Jack, I mean, I know. Like, this is like, kidding, this is like a cold. hot chick that's fucking just smeared in shit. <laughs> <laughs> like, it looks good. It yeah. tastes so even better. The worst part about it is that he wasn't ever planning on refrigerating it either. Yeah. We were going to drink it. Yeah, it was, you were going to drink it how I had it last Straight out of yeah. his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, they were in the car for a while. They were a little warm. On the side of the <laughs> can, it says, recycle me. I can't even finish you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, Jimmy, you got some shows de- coming up. I didn't deserve a drum thing. Uh, <laughs> I do. I do. You want, my, you want me to tell you what they yeah, are? Yeah, I don't know. What yeah. <laughs> <laughs> June 23rd, you're in Reno, Nevada. At the Reno, Sil- baby! Silver Legacy Resort Casino. Don't they uh, print matchbooks for you there? Oh, they used to back in the day. They're very nice to me at the Legacy. And the people at Reno are very nice. Yeah, I love that always, place. It's fun. They've always shown up. The staff there's great. Well, I put on a good show for you. you still I've have got, anti-Jim got, Jeffries I'm, there? I, I still, they still have a day. That's great. They have a whole day dedicated that's to me. That's correct. In Reno, that's in right. In Reno, the, they have the a- The mayor they, of Reno. I don't know if she's still the mayor, but at the time, they-, they uh, Nothing wrong with the mayor, by the way. <laughs> nothing wrong with the mayor. <laughs> if she you mean the mayor? She's the sexiest mayor of any city in America. Well, Jack's looking it up. If she's I'm still telling the mayor. you, the mayor of Reno. But it was a proclamation of- an, she, It was anti-Jim Jeffries. She's so good looking, she could be the mayor of Vegas. That good. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe she's gonna- September 9th. Is anti Jim Jeffries day? September nine. Oh, yeah, you gotta remember. What is she? Still Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> I don't remember. If she's still the mayor. Uh, let me find her name. Nine nine. Never forget. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you'll be in Reno June twenty third. Uh, June twenty fourth. You'll. Be- I would have liked uh, June ninth. Mm, yeah. yeah. That would be. Yeah, a good that would have been a good one. So yeah. June twenty fourth, you'll be because it's it- summer. You'll be in <laughs> Groton Resort and Casino in Rohnert Park, California. It's near Santa Rosa, just north of San Francisco, up there, about an hour. All right, I'll be. Yeah, she, she's she's still the mayor. Yeah. What's her name? Oh, there's nothing wrong with that. Hillary Sheave. Hillary Sheave, that's her name all day. Hillary's a nice person. You should invite her. Uh, I have nothing. To the show. I have yeah, nothing. I'll, I'll email the. I'll email I, her. I have nothing but nice words to say about Hillary. She's all right, Hillary. Yeah, yeah. She's a nice person. Yeah, I don't know if people this know the get reason for it's Hillary anti-Jim Clinton's Jeffries. Campaign. Don't tell them. <laughs> uh, you don't want people to know on the podcast? Uh, no. Okay. If you've, I if, mean, you've I on the show. told a joke about Reno. Yeah. And then the people of Reno freaked out. Do, 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 like that. And then... <laughs> I mean, it aired on television. Yeah, it, it was on television. your TV yeah, show. It was, it was on Comedy Central. It so. was a few people got upset because I gave the coordinates of Reno and told... To Kim uh, John un Yeah, to, to Kim John un And I told him... That was New York or something. Yeah, this is where you bomb. This is where yeah. you send the nuke. This is where you send the nuke, right? <laughs> and uh, I go to the coordinates and people wrote to me like this. Oh, thanks. Now I have to watch out for my family. Is there not enough that I <laughs> have to work at Walmart all day? Now I got to panic about a nuclear bombing dropped. Thanks a million. The, like Im- the imagination's and, remarkable. And then this is the thing is, yeah, yeah. we didn't even give the real coordinates. <laughs> we credit the lawyers. Yeah. The, the lawyers. lawyers. In the end, we gave coordinates that were out in the desert or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> it was like it was like it's where you want a nuclear bomb to drop. Like right, yeah. like you know. But it, it was, is um, that, that the lawyers. I think that. we gave San Diego or something. <laughs> anyway. but, but it is funny that the lawyers came back and were like, you can't give the exact coordinates, just put it out somewhere in the desert where probably still someone lives. Oh, like, yeah. <laughs> there's someone in a trailer out there or something. Just yeah, so we, <laughs> so we put it out in the desert <laughs> and then the people got very angry at me and then they did a news story yep. on the news about what a piece of shit I am and then like and then like the lady was like, the mayor was like this, we don't need this type of talk here in <laughs> yeah, Reno. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And she got the mayor, what's her name again? Hillary Sheehan. Anyway, Hillary, Hillary. Hillary gets out there and she tells you off. And then, so we contact Hillary and then Hillary comes and presents to me. I have a certificate. Yeah, in, it was framed. Fra- in, yeah. in like a folder, like a stern folder. Oh. And and uh, from the city of Reno. And there is an anti-Jim Jeffries day yeah. in Reno. It's, I don't know how people celebrate it. <laughs> yeah, it's confusing <laughs> how they feel about it. Do they hate you or do yeah, they love yeah, you? Are yeah, they yeah, in like, on the joke? Like, does anyone, is it a religious holiday for some? <laughs> do, they, do they get their time off work? <laughs> 
Uh, so June 23rd, Reno. June 24th, Roanoke Park, California. August 25th, we've been in Hartford, Connecticut at the Bushnell. August 26th, Providence, Rhode Island at Veterans Memorial Auditorium. And then from September 7th on, you're in Canada and a bunch of stuff. There's a bunch of dates if you go to jimjeffries.com and check that out. And uh, yeah, I'm all go- over America. I'm all over it. Go see me too, foreshaw.net. All my dates are on there, but uh, specifically at Montreal, July 6th through the 8th, and then Philadelphia Punchline, July 9th. Go to those shows, please, if you're in those areas. A little shout out to the folks in Australia who are listening. If you're a big fan of uh, the 1% Club, which incidentally is doing really well on TV. Um, if you like the 1% Club and you're enjoying the show and you live in the Sydney area, we've now moved filming to Sydney. Uh, we're going to be there in August. Mm. Why don't you go on to the Channel 7 webpage and see if you want to become a contestant and give yourself a rally on the drums. Yeah, maybe 100,000. My dad went. My dad got into me for saying, give him a rally on the drums. I've been saying that on all the episodes. Why? Why? Oh, bloody, you sound stupid. The, bloody, the young people don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I've got this term of you, Dad. Oh, you say it once or twice, it's a bit of fun, but you bloody overdo it. <laughs> <laughs> Please welcome our guest, Anna Wolf. Anna Wolf, now it's time to play. Yes, yes no, yes no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Judging a book by its cover. Anna Wolf, that's a great name, Anna Wolf. I'd like to Thank have, you. I'd like to have an animal as my second name. Yeah. If only I could name myself anything <laughs> I wanted, I would take that opportunity. Um, okay, uh, Anna, Anna is standing in front of a plain, so I would say a cream eggshell yeah. uh, wall. It's got a, one hole in there from a thumbtack or maybe a uh, hook that maybe it had art previously on it. I'm not learning anything. Yep. Um, did, 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 w- w- is your accent southern? Did I hear a southern twang in there? It is southern. You're yeah. good, yes. Yeah, we had a southern twang, so you're from the south. So um, are we going to talk about the Confederate flag? We are not. Oh, thank <laughs> God. No. That's a that's a difficult one to make jokes about, so I appreciate you not bringing that up. This is much more lighthearted. Absolutely. Much, much more light. Okay, so <laughs> it's not the other thing that happened in the south. All right, I won't bring that up. Okay. Um, a, this is, uh, do you want to hit? Is it grits? No. Oh, oh, that is I love it. I love grits. Yeah, it's, grits one of the, it's one of the American things I've taken on board with you, me. You think we can take a whole episode of grits? Down. Ah, <laughs> how many grits are there? There's so many. Cheese, mm, even grits, in one plate. Geez. No, just all the grits. It's just there's thousands of them on a plate. Oh, you mean in, okay, uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not talking about food at all. If you named them all, we're not all talking right, about food. It's about the human body. It's about an animal. Ooh, is it about wolves? No. <laughs> that would be two on the <laughs> <laughs> no. Two on the nose. Uh, uh, okay, so 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 okay, you're from the south. What type of animals? Ones that have been used in wars. Yeah. Horses. Yeah, that was, that's, yeah, that's, <laughs> he, said he went Confederate flag, all that that's stuff. It, that's was, you know, that's the together. only only animal that gets used. In, you can use dogs pigeons, and pigeons, pigeons and dolphins. Yeah, yeah. We are talking about horses. Uh, Anna Wolf's passion for horses led her to study under <laughs> the progressive hoof. hoof. Okay, let me do that again. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sneeze in the middle. I think there's another one coming, but give it a go. Anna. Sure. Okay. Anna Wolf's passion for horses led her to study under the progressive hoof care practitioner curriculum and mentor with local farriers. You might want to remember that word to become one herself. She has been professionally trimming as a farrier for two years, including numerous successful hoofs, rehabilitations and corrections. I'm having problems. Uh, You can find her on Instagram at kiss the ponies. And also on Facebook, you can visit uh, Three Stacks Farms, where she works. And uh, thanks for being here, Anna. Maybe you can tell us a little bit more about how you got into being with and horses and a farrier. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so horses have been a part of my life for as long as I can remember. I mean, I was a five year old planning to get my first horse. And as an adult, I seized that opportunity and did get horses. And so my farrier, um, she kind of pulled me into the farrier world. She's, hey, I see you have an interest in this. You obviously have a talented eye for this. And there is a need in our industry, in our area, for really good, talented, quality farriers. Don't, so don't, don't they, tell this Jim was divine fa- intervention, but- how I got here, uh, absolute blessings. And I am a hoof nerd at my core. Yeah. You're I a hoof love nerd. what I yeah, do. Yeah. I love helping the horses. And keeping essentially the the most important part of the horse uh, healthy and correct and balanced because without a, a hoof you have no horse because of how much they weigh their their composition I mean it 
so you're gonna say this, but if you don't have a hoof, just go dig the, the go dig the hole in the back pasture. You know that that's that's the reality. I of feel business. the, the so same way about amputees. <laughs> What, what huh? <laughs> if they don't have feet, just bury them. <laughs> oh my God. God, like there's, yeah, there's like, no, it's true. no quality uh, of life. A Stop. Leg for the horse, no, it costs too much. So, cost too. You can't give them like Oscar Pistorius flippers. <laughs> At the back, <laughs> it would be like a springy horse that could that could yeah, race yeah, in the Special Olympics. The, the, yeah. Kentucky, the Kentucky Derby ones weren't so lucky, so uh, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, that would be cool. A, a horse with four mm-hmm. Oscar Pistorius flippers? Yeah, that thing would fraying <laughs> along. Bouncing all over the place. Someone who does science fiction, make that happen. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see that. Um, sorry, I, sorry, I was cutting you off there. And you're, and you're, and, um, when, when, when My, you're I'll tell you a little thing about horses. My father claims that he, this is his own words, the, the sexiest I look is on the back of a horse. Yeah. That's what he reckons. I agree with that. That's what he tells me. <laughs> yeah, he reckons when he's riding up on the back of a horse, he bloody... Uh, there was there was a chance I was going to get an acting job where I was about to go do some horse training, but I didn't get the job. Yeah. But I was, I was asked to do the job, and then somebody said no, you know, one of those type of things. But it was like they were going... It was a western type thing. And my character... And I got such bad posture. I didn't want to ride on the horse like this. I want to do <laughs> I wanted to get up, right? I was meant to be like, it was it's drama. I was meant to be mm-hmm. like a cowboy and I was going to go for horse training and that was the thing that was more, most exciting. The acting yeah. scared the shit out of me. But the horse training, I was well up for horse yeah. training. I thought that would be a bit of fun. Anyway, it's all it's all me horse news. Okay. <laughs> well, uh, Anna, I'm going to ask news. Jim a series of questions about horses and when he's done answering them, you're going to grade him. Ah, the, the equine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. Um, uh, when he's done answering him, you're going to grade him on his accuracy, 0 through 10. 10 the best. Uh, Kelly's going to grade him on confidence, and I'm going to grade him on et cetera. We'll add all the scores together. Uh, Jim, right. if you get uh, 21 through 30. <laughs> That's three points, man. Yeah. 11 through 20. I wasn't expecting <laughs> <laughs> 0 through 10, nay, nay. <laughs> nay, nay, all right. Nay, nay, I like really nay, enjoyed nay. that. Might be my, my father one. used yeah. to go when we were in small towns. You go, this is a unique town. Uni meaning one, equi meaning horse. <laughs> no. <laughs> that was his big gag. First question, what, what is the scientific name for the domestic horse? The equine. These the, are two words. But, you know, uh, there's, ec- a, there's a genus species. The equinox. But. The equine equinox? <laughs> no, oh, it's, 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 it's uh, just an expensive gym. <laughs> it's expensive gym, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, um, the the, the, the equi- equi- equine. You're close, but what is the average gestation period for a horse? Uh, four months. Four months. What is the common term for a female horse? Um, a filly. Oops, sorry. Really bad form there. What is the term for a castrated male horse? Um, a husband. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> you like that one, Anna? I've got lots of jokes like that. You're gonna be, you're gonna be enjoying them the whole show. <laughs> How many? Bo- Hang on, I haven't finished my. Uh, that was my joke answer. You know that wasn't a serious answer. Uh, okay. For a castrated horse. Oh, oh, funny, funny. Um, I would say uh, ca- the castrated horse. That would be a s- no, steers the cow. A stud's the one that gives him the sperm. Mm-hmm. He's the one working for sperm. I will call him a jack. What the? How many? <laughs> <laughs> how many bones are there in a horse's skeleton? Oh, only one if I see him. Oh, um, <laughs> Jesus Christ! Sorry, that was. I don't know what that meant. That was a bit, a bit lewd. You got to be on a list. Seen the somewhere. videos? A bit yeah. lewd. Oh, oh no! <laughs> don't say anything. Um, uh, all right, uh, two hundred and eighty-six. How does one tell the age of a horse without their breeding records? Um, you talk to Mr. Ed. Yeah, you just ask him. <laughs> That's the whole song. <laughs> talk to Mr. A horse is a horse, of course, yeah. of course, and no one can talk to a talking horse, so forth and so on. Um, no, you would check the rings around the asshole, similar to that of a tree. <laughs> <laughs> what? Um, I must skip this one right for now. What is the term for the act of giving birth uh, in horses? Oh, I, I didn't know. I didn't know we could fit in. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're never gonna get through these. <laughs> I think Brett Trippy just arrived. <laughs> <laughs> that was our uh, mountain biking guy. <laughs> um, Shout out to Brett. Uh, yeah. Sorry, what happened? 
What's the term for the act of giving birth in horses? Uh, horse husbandry. Can horses sleep standing up? If so, how? Uh, I don't believe that horses do sleep standing up. I believe that's a cow thing. But why would you ask the question I ask? Mm. Oh, it's ever so devilish. Because the answer wouldn't be no. <laughs> because then you would ask that question of every animal. And you've never asked it before. <laughs> so the answer the answer has to be yes, they can sleep. <laughs> sleep. And if so, how? Yeah. Leaning up against other horses. <laughs> <laughs> how soon after birth can a foal walk or run? Oh, um... They right away. Okay. They fall out. They sort of. Oh, I'll say ten seconds, fifteen seconds. How does a horse breathe? They they get called a fall because it's a long drop from the. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. From the I like vagina. It. I mm-hmm. like these answers. Yeah. I don't know if they're right, but <laughs> how does a horse breathe? Through its mouth, man, yeah. and its nose. <laughs> mouth it's, and nose. Mouth and nose, because you go. <laughs> yeah. Like that. And it has uh, <laughs> it has lungs similar to that of a human. Mm-hmm. Whoa! Uh, and it's uh, that's a breathy tube. Yeah. Um, what is the <laughs> name of the process where horses regurgitate food from their stomach to chew it again? This is a trick question. Oh, I've done this myself. Yeah, uh, I'm telling you, it's a trick question. <laughs> Seconds. <laughs> yeah. Regurgitation. Okay. Annihilation. Uh, let me <laughs> skip around here. We'll get to all these, but these I'll are skip all good. Around. You don't have to skip around um, on my behalf. What is a farrier? Ooh, wouldn't you like to know? (laughs) (laughs) And as one. Oh, a fairy art would be someone who takes care of horses and the stables and stuff like that and then trains the the horses for the equestrian events. Okay. Oh, yeah, I missed this one. What is the name of the largest part of a horse's body located between the withers and the tail? Oh, the penis. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even know what the withers are. <laughs> uh, the largest part would be the torso. Yeah, it's got a spe- specific name in horses. Oh, uh, it's core. <laughs> core, yeah, good. Uh, I, I forgot this one too. What is the term There's for a horse? There's a lot of exercises like this. <laughs> what is the term for a horse that is not yet one year old? There's one for males and one for females. Oh, a, a gelding hmm. and a gilding. Okay. Sounds good to uh, me. I, don't know. Yeah. I think I am right on that. Before I was going to say I'm wrong. That is an answer. To it's something. an answer, but not that question. <laughs> <laughs> how often? How often should a horse's hooves be trimmed by a farrier? Oh, you're a manicurist for horses. <laughs> I've, cha- <laughs> I've, changed, I've changed my answer. Yeah. How do you get pushed out by Korean women because they do it so well? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Was that? Because <laughs> <No, no, no. laughs> they're always doing the tit. They ha- oh god, that joke does it. <laughs> I'm complimenting them. I'm not being racist. I'm saying they're good at a job. Okay, we're almost done. How often should horses <laughs> be trimmed by a farrier? How often? Uh, every every three months. Three months. Okay. And what material makes up a horse's hoof? Um, uh, cartilage, uh, fingernails. 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 <laughs> um, and it's a big uh, fingernail, isn't it? what type of diet should a horse be eating to maintain hoof health? Is your last question. Uh, you just one propecia a day for the hooves. <laughs> Oh, that's for their hair. Yeah. Good point for us. Uh, lots of spinach. Spinach, okay. Anna, how did Jim do on his knowledge of horses? Iron, iron. Zero through ten. Ten's the best. Oh, Jim, I'm sorry. You're, you're nay-naying right now. Oh, uh, I'm all right with that. Yeah. I'm all right with that. So, okay. like, what, I never like pertain- one or two? or. Uh, I believe you got two or three correct. Um, mm. So, we can start going over them whenever you're ready. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do the score first. So, you, you, let's guess, say you got a two on that there. And then, how are you doing confidence, I'm Kelly? giving him a 10. I really liked a lot 10, of 10, 12. Yeah, that was okay. confident. Yeah, that was... I'm giving him a zero on et cetera, but you still have 12, so... Yeah, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm all right with this. Um, <laughs> what is the scientific name for the domestic horse? Is it the equine, Anna? It is not. It's the uh, equus cabalus. Mm-hmm. And um, the earliest known domestic horses were in the 1400s when the Spaniards brought them back over to North America. Oh, the Spaniards. Uh, yeah. They bloody get away with murder, the Spaniards. Yeah. They? What do you mean? <laughs> well, they, they took over the world. And, oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. You mean like no one. It's always the English. Yeah. yeah. Um, what They're if- bloody giving horses to people. The horses were running free before the Spaniards <laughs> came along. <laughs> <laughs> they were. <laughs> what is the average gestation period for a horse? Jim says four months. Is that correct? It is not. The average gestation is between 330 and 360 days. Ah, so a year. That's a long time. It's yeah. terrible. When you, yeah, yeah. When you, yeah. they can't race in that time. 
I, I think when they, they cannot- yeah, when they wouldn't be able to do much. They got a giant little horse on their stomach. Yeah, I, not in you, the stomach. And, and are, you, are, you, are you a fan of horse racing, or do you not like the horse racing? I watch it. Um, there are things that I disagree with, um, but you know the the show will go on. But so don't, don't is there is there pros and like don't horses enjoy running? Don't they race in the wild? Don't they get a better life than most horses? Because because I always feel like everyone just goes that ah oh, they lose a race, they break a leg, they get shot. That's the that's the narrative. Now I live with a vegan woman who, if I watch horse racing, she'll tell my wife who's also vegan. And <laughs> and so I mean, well, you're you're not wrong. So this past year in the Kentucky Derby, there was a broken leg, and the horse was put down, um, not shot, but you know, you're not you're not wrong. There, I just clubbed um, to death with a back. To, to rehabilitate that <laughs> is extremely expensive, and and they, they just don't do it. Can't they just give the horse to somebody and go, oh, this one races in the Kentucky Derby and there'll be like some lady who's like a cat lady who's already got 47 <laughs> horses in her backyard, but she's like, fuck it, I'll do it. I love horses. Like that. I mean, sure, there, there is that. There is that. Um, but again, there's the monetary aspect. And then because of their confirmation and the, the just sheer body mass um, to, to have that task, of rehabilitating the horse you have to ask the question is the horse going to have a good quality of life while you're doing this and the answer is usually no right. so they just choose to do the main thing put the horse down right 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 and that's the that, but, but if they don't get put down their lives are pretty schmick right like people are taking real good care of them or are they whipped all the time to make them go fast they like my no horse. they're not whipped all the time now from what i know about the horse anatomy and their growth pattern and such a three-year-old uh put under that amount of stress that's really not good for their body. A horse does not um, finish maturing, uh, and their their ligaments and tendons and their 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 bone structure does not finish growing until the age of seven. Right. So for a two and three year old to be racing in that magnitude and that amount of stress on their bodies, it really just it's not a good thing. And do they race so, them at that age? No, I didn't know that. That's the age they race them at. They do. The Kentucky Derby are three year olds. Oh. Yes, they oh, are. Oh, boo. <laughs> I was all for it. I was living in a world where they were happy living and racing in the woods. <laughs> and we were just making their life better and taking knots out of their hair. They're children. And now I hear that we're slave laboring child labor horses <laughs> running down. Those children horses should be off building iPads like real child yeah. labor. <laughs> they shouldn't be made to race for our entertainment. Yeah. Make me a shoe, horse. Well, you know what I wish? I wish I could have all the boring stuff I have to do on a daily basis just completely automated. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. me grocery shopping, cleaning, the other stuff I get up to. <laughs> Luckily for <laughs> an e-commerce business owner, shipping is no longer a manual task thanks to ShipStation. Ooh. Save time automating your shipping returns with ShipStation dashboard whilst keeping costs down with the industry-leading discounts. Now, I use ShipStation to move all my uh, records and stuff like that when I sell merch, right? Mm -hmm. You want to see some, you want to buy some Jim Jeffries hats? Yeah. Or a t shirt? Don't have the t shirts anymore. You want to know I stopped the t shirts? I ran out. Too many sizes. <laughs> when, they, when they do ship out, though, what do we use? Ship station. Ship station. If you're worried about no, uh, not knowing where to start or have been on the fence, ship station sets up, set up is incredibly easy. And best of all, you get a free trial. That's how easy it is. Free trial. And, and then, right, if your business requires shipping at all, You'd be doing yourself a huge... How do you roll up a page, Jack? <laughs> Fuck me. I know you were like, and then... <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how to roll the page up. ShipStation makes it easy to automate shipping tasks for orders from every marketplace on one dashboard. Effortlessly integrate everywhere you sell online, including Amazon, Etsy, eBay, Shopify, and more. Manage every order from one simple dashboard, print shop our pr- shipping labels, easily compare rates and delivery times to optimize every shipment, and automate delivery notifications. Ooh. With... And with enterprise solutions that make warehouse optimization easy, ShipStation scales when you do. With industry-leading discounts, you'll never worry about overpaying for shipping. Uh, get up to 84% off UPS and or USPS. USPS. 
I did both. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and if that's not enough, use my promo code and try ShipStation free for two months. Over 130,000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ShipStation. And 98% of the companies that sick with ShipStation for a year become customers for life. Spend more time growing your business when you automate shipping tasks with ShipStation. Go to ShipStation.com and use the code Jim today and sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, code Jim. Uh, I, uh, I don't like watching it. I love horses. I don't know much about horses. I've ridden some, but I love horses, but I, I don't like you, watching me, them race. Me and my brothers like used to go to this place where you ride horses. I think I've told you this before. You used to go ride horses. And we ride horses okay, right? You get them I can't for, imagine you on a horse. I can ride a horse. Uh, okay. So you get them for like a few hours and you ride around. I mean, you bloody mom country. You've got a bit of country <laughs> in me, mate. So so we ride, we ride them around. We ride them around and then... Anyway, so me and my brother, we go, we go down to this place and they normally give you a couple of slow horses and the f- last few horses we've had weren't very good, right? And you have to sign a contract and, uh, and they go to you, how many times have you ridden a horse? And Scott, my brother, he would, I would have been about 13, he would have been about 17. Yeah. Scott went like this, oh, yeah, so how long, how long did we live on that property for? Oh, yeah. And we rode every day there. That was fucking 10 years times by. <laughs> 10 years times by every day. It was every day times by 10 years. <laughs> like this. So. 17? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 17. So, so like, 3,000 times. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so he, and then he does for his day off, he goes and rides horses yeah, yeah. at this place. Right? <laughs> he goes, yeah, but we moved here to Sydney and now, now we haven't ridden for a while. I miss, I miss the horse. So... Ten years times by all the days of the year. How many days of the year? <laughs> like that, right? And then he got on a horse that was terrible. Yeah, and so uh, no, so then they went, Oh, you boys know how to ride. And they go, There's a couple of horses we want to break in. I remember one <laughs> of them oh. I, remember, I remember one of them was called Kangaroo. That's what I remember. So and this thing was jumping and bucking around. Yeah. All right, boys. And they sort of held it and we steadied on and we got on the thing. And then these things just fucking shot over the hill. <laughs> we had a hell of a time with these two horses. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. What is the common term for a female horse? Did you say Philly? Philly. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's where you got one of me points. You are correct. Um, a young horse is a Philly, a uh, breeding age horse or an older female horse is a mare. And then those female mm-hmm. horses who their only job is to have more babies, uh, that's a brood mare. So oh, well, that's okay. Correct. So, man, because I my dad refers to girls as fillies. He goes, "What were the fillies mm, yeah. like at the party?" Now <laughs> that I know that they're underage, I'm going to start. <laughs> I'm at the age now. I'm like going to the nightclub. It's packed with mares. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brood mares. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Brood mares. They're just there for reproducting. Am I right, boys? <laughs> um, what What is the term for a castrated male horse? Uh, Jim said Jack. A husband was my first answer, yeah. and we all laughed. It is a gelding. You, uh, you gelding. had it right further down. It is a gelding. Yeah, gelding. you said gelding later, and I was like, "That's just in your brain as a horse." You, were, um, yeah, you. I know. I know. I don't. Obviously, I know nothing about horses, but my dad knew a lot about. Do you know my grandfather? I didn't. He died when my dad was fourteen. <laughs> but my grandfather, right, never owned a car. <clears throat> You never, that's just how fucking. Yeah, just rode. He, he rode the family <laughs> around on horseback and mm. with a little cart behind him. And, he, and they went to, they went, oh, well, then dad would go, we'd go into town on the horse, me and dad, and I'd sit on the back of the horse with dad, and we'd go see a movie. And then afterwards, he'd ask if I want candy, but I didn't like candy, so I got baloney. <laughs> <laughs> which, in Australia, which in Australia is called Devon, but I changed it for the American audience. I'd get myself some Devon. Uh, I love Gary so much. Um, <laughs> why would you castrate a male horse, though? To keep him in line, no. Forrest. I've had a vis- Sectomy, am I a gelding? <laughs> You're not a gelding. Oh. You're not a horse. Um, however, I've also cut me testicles would, off. Um, <laughs> huh? I've also cut me testicles off. It's Don't just, worry about it, man. It's, <laughs> it's just, wow, you wow. still have your testicles at home. It's, it's, just, it's just a shaft <laughs> now and a bit of a Kendall here. bottom. <laughs> uh, so why would you castrate a male horse? You would you do that for reproductive control. So uh, I have three geldings myself, and I have a mare in my pasture. I don't want her to be bred 
So the reality is that it's easier just to, to castrate the males and leave the females alone. <laughs> yeah, I think that's as in society. But I um, do, do they, the, does the male horse still try it on or is his libido gone? It depends on how early he was castrated. Um, I do have one who still thinks that he can do it and he can't. So uh, we just kind of let him go. <laughs> it is what it is. <laughs> um, how many bones are there in a horse's skeleton? Jim said 286. 286. How do you do? 205. Ah, that's not bad. I got, so I got, got the right uh, and hundred. only three of which are in the hoof itself. So it's kind of, it's pretty fascinating uh, when yeah. we get down to that structure itself. I feel like they have a lot in the shoulder blade and neck. Yes. That's how, that's we have 206, if I remember, two or so, something like that. I remember in our anatomy one, she said it's always the number kind of change, but it's the amount of bones, but their big. bones are bigger. Yeah. Um, uh, how do you tell the age of a horse without their breeding records? Um, what did I say first? You said that. Ring, <laughs> rings around the asshole similar to that of a tree. I don't think that was rings right. Rings around the asshole similar to that of a tree. I don't think that was right. <laughs> Let's see if I got a point. No point there. Ah, <laughs> um, ah, you don't know horses so, like I do then. <laughs> you actually tell the age of the horse um, by their teeth and by how their mouth and how the teeth are shaped at the time of viewing. So um, a full seat, they're actually going to be very short, you know, a very minute placed. And as the horse gets older, the teeth get longer and the mouth actually becomes more extended. So um, long you, know, in the you, tooth. you would age. Yeah. Oh, get, long in the tooth. Yeah. I don't know. I think all, everyone, mm -hmm. do. I don't know. Um, a horse walks into a bar and the barman says, why the long face? And he goes, I just had me balls cut off, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> I really, I'm really loving what's happening with you today. I, I like it a lot. I'm yeah. just going for it. Um, <laughs> I didn't ask this, this, this it's question. It's a new we'll theme of the podcast. I'm, not, I'm trying, but not like I am, but I'm better. You're doing good. <laughs> what is the term for the act of giving birth in horses? Is it horse husbandry? Horse husbandry. Horse, no, it is called foaling. Um so that is exactly what it is. When the horse gets birth, they're in full, twofold. It's yeah. simplicity. Is. With, do they say anything husbandry? Because I know with sheep, it's sheep husbandry. Cattle, it's always husbandry. When you become an expert on something, is there horse yeah. husbandry? No. In my realm, I have not heard of horse husbandry. Oh, okay, because like, okay, so like when you're in Australia and if you're, you, you got these kids who come to the city and they stay in the boarding school section of the school or whatever like that, and a lot of them are rich kids because they're from farms and there's mm -hmm. no private schools, so they have to come into uh, the, yeah. to the city for school, right? And they always study as their university course because they're taking over the family farm, sheep husbandry. Right, because Australia's big on raising sheep, and that's what you have to the degree you have to get to be a farmer with sheep. Well, it helps probably. Um, and I make fun of those people whenever I hear that. As a as a teenager, <laughs> when you find out a guy at your school is going to study sheep husbandry, oh, that's a good day. <laughs> <laughs> um, can horses sleep standing up? I said, if so, how? Jim went on a long answer. To the, no, it's cow. Let me buy what ask the question you ask. And I just kind of went on from there. I said yes, but they lean up against each yeah, other like two soldiers yeah, in yeah. arm who are trying to stay so, awake. So how do they sleep, horses? <laughs> so they can sleep standing up. It is a very light sleep. And uh, for us, you and I discussed it, the standing apparatus. And they actually unlock their kneecap. And it's similar to a, a human uh, like dropping one hip when you're relaxed. And that's what they're talking about. And horses can actually do that at will. So they will unlock that kneecap and lower their hip, and they'll just be really relaxed, laying their head low, just kind of lightly catnap. So when they need to get some really good, deep, uh, restful sleep, they will actually lay down. They'll take turns. So in the mornings, you know, I'll see two, two of mine laying down, two of them standing up, and they'll take turns getting that really good, probably 45 minutes to an hour of deep realm sleep. And, um, you know, they, they are herd animals, so they do look out for each other for predators or danger or whatnot. So they take turns doing that. It's pretty I'm, cool. I might get in trouble saying this, but I'm not quite sure why. And I've been thinking about it since you said it. Now I'm like, I am just, okay. Japanese people can sleep standing up. Yeah. They can. Why you, you're, you're just saying this because you've seen that. I've seen it. And yeah. I didn't just see Where? it once. I've seen it every time I go to Japan. <laughs> They okay, on the train. Well, I don't think I, I don't think it's Japanese people. I think it's a cultural thing, not a yeah. I don't know how the fuck they do it. It's a skill that I wish I had. 
Yeah. But if they're hanging on yeah. to that pole on the train, they'll be sleeping and hanging on and then wake up for their stop. It's I remarkable. I can't even sleep setting up yeah. in a plane. I don't yeah. know, but I've seen this in Japan on two separate occasions. I thought one time, but there was about three or four of them all sleeping, standing up. All right. That's cool. Join then the I went back. I don't know. Will I get in trouble for saying that? I, I don't know. I've got to go learn I that would, skill. I would like to be able to do it, but I've seen Jack, it in Japan twice. Jack is I don't know about it. I'm going to have to go ask my family Jack, about Google that. Google Japanese people sleeping, standing up on trains. Okay, have, you ever yeah. slept, have, have you ever slept sleep? Said, Jack, you're half Japanese, so... Okay. Anyway. No, I think we've lost out of here. <laughs> uh, uh, um, I, well, I had a question because the sleeping thing, and I, I just yeah. read this, but I don't know if it's true. It says that horses only. Jack, Jack Jim's not even paying attention. I am paying they, attention. They only I'll, sleep when two. I, when I find something, I'll let you know. Images. Yeah, yeah. They, that horses only sleep like two and a half hours a day. Is that true? That that's right about true. They they are inherently lazy animals. They don't like to do very much. Uh, uh, so that they don't use a lot of energy unless necessary. So that that is an accurate statement. Oh wow! Um, I yeah. Uh, I horses in the wild they will travel between like fifteen and twenty miles a day, but it is a very slow, you know, yeah. just meandering journey. So fifteen to twenty miles a day—that's just what a horse would just do, dicking about, yeah. 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 And so, it. so is it bad to keep them in any type of captivity? Then, because we keep so many in captivity, like how much land should they really yeah. have so that they don't feel imprisoned? Right. It, it, it's definitely not natural. I wouldn't say it's wrong. Um, so. <laughs> and also, would you like you should, to be no, transported because, in a carriage where your ass hangs out and you can't turn around? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that sucks. <laughs> so, in, in my line of work, um, we have essentially taken the horse out of its natural environment. And we're trying to recreate a natural environment in a domestic environment. It is the the most fucked up thing I've ever seen in my life. But here we are. Mm. Um, and in captivity, they will maybe get up to like five miles a day uh, if, if they're lucky. Now, if they're on 40 acres, you have no issues. But a lot of the horses that I see in my area, that's not the case. Right, right, right. Wow. Five miles a day. And then, so how soon after birth can a full walker run? Jim said 15 seconds. Uh, right away yeah they can get up uh, as quick as they as they are able to so usually within the first hour we like to see the foals get up and move around and get their legs and what have you um probably by the 24 hour mark they'll start to understand how oh, these babies can move and they'll they'll start to get up and, and try to run um you know yeah. hour or so they'll be able to walk poorly we suck. <laughs> it takes us yeah. a year humans are so dumb <laughs> right it takes us a year these things are doing it in an hour running <laughs> yeah one year uh, you can work yeah yeah, we're terrible. Uh, people, are, yeah. people, are, the human baby is the worst of all the. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It yeah. can't really defend designed. for itself. It's, it's still like that's why it gets the extra time in the womb. The, the, the horse. Yeah, like the yeah. baby really needs yeah. a year in the womb, and then should come out walking. I but think, it doesn't get that. I think the idea would be that horses, <laughs> there's natural predators for animals. So they need to be able to run or walk quicker, but there would there's be natural, predators. Natural predators for us. Uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. The tax man. Okay. I'm talking about. I'm talking about lies. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Now, um, uh, and how does a horse breathe? Jim says through their mouth and nose. Mouthy hole. <laughs> uh, they cannot breathe through their mouth. Actually, they can Ooh. only breathe through their nose. What? So yeah. yeah. So when you see uh, when you're watching the derbies and such, and they'll have like a band around their mouth, keep their mouth closed. That's so that they just continuously suck air through their nose. Um, and they won't have any breathing issues uh, holding their mouth open. Mm. Yeah, I constantly That's talk why about this. Is so good at sex. I talk about this <laughs> off stage and on stage. Is that we are that we're flawed in that way too. We shouldn't be breathing. You shouldn't be eating and breathing out of the same hole. That's what mm. I say. And here's just another dangerous. example of an animal. And also cocaine. Where does it go? Yeah. <laughs> does it? Because I, I uh, did I have that in my lungs? <laughs> That just sort of gets stuck up your nose and clags up. Then did I actually yeah. get it into Blood, my lungs? Bloodstream. Yeah, bloodstream. Yeah. It gets in the bloodstream, but I'm sniffing up. Does it ever get into my lungs? It shouldn't. You would cough. You don't want stuff in your lungs. That's not air. <laughs> it's not going to be good. That's my whole point. Is that we have we're breathing. I don't do it anyway. We're breathing and eating out of the same. I don't hole. even have nicotine in my system yeah. anymore. Yeah, I know. I'm on fire. This but, is the healthiest I'll ever look. <laughs> but breathing. You look great. But, Thank you. Wait. So is it? You're welcome. So do horses? Not choke then? 
They do. So they they cannot regurgitate. Uh, um, mm. The sphincter between their esophagus and their stomach closes very tightly, so food cannot come back up. And what happens uh, if they get course, drunk? <laughs> Huh? What happens if they get drunk? Oh, I guess they're done for. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Can a horse get drunk? Next question. I don't know. Never tried. I bet you could. Bet Probably, you yeah. Because I, mean, I know, people, I know, I know dogs that have gotten drunk. Yeah. People have gotten dogs drunk, which I think is very cruel. But, oh, yeah. uh, but wait, they can't regurgitate. So then, yeah, it's dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. If they take themselves to the hotel and have an overdose of pills, that's it for them. There's nothing they can do. Damn. You, you, you're Treasure. just hanging out with bad horses. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fun Bo and fun Bojack horses. horseman. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, what is the term for a horse that is not yet one year old? Jim said a gelding and a gilding. Gilding, gelding. So that would be a foal. And for the males, it's a colt. And for the females, we're fillies. A colt. Colt, yeah. Colt. It's an easy one. Could have gotten a point there. Knew that one, the Colts. You wouldn't have changed your score. Still. So that's the football team is a <laughs> one-year-old horse. The Indianapolis Colts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, they'd still run fast. Faster than human, probably. Yeah, but still, it's a one-year-old horse. It's Hard not, to It's not good for its body to be racing. Yeah, no, it shouldn't be playing football. Yeah, it would shouldn't be, be playing football. a lot of CTE. For the Cincinnati top. Putting a helmet on this animal and just clubbing it with a dolphin. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, this, this should, so this should be the Stallions. Stallions, yeah. Indianapolis Stallions. The Italian Stallions. Well, it's Indianapolis, but yeah. Mm. Um, what is the name of the largest part of the horses? Where, where are horses indigenous to? What country do they come from? That is, uh, you go way back. So tens of millions of years ago, they were in North America. And when all of the separations of the continents happened, um, you know, they ended up in, in Europe. So the Spaniards brought them over back to North America. All right, so the North America, they're the indigenous to here, and so yeah, so Australia obviously didn't have any two hundred years ago. They would have been introduced then. I don't know. No, they didn't. Oh, okay, there's no special Australian horse. Yeah, playing a didgeridoo. <laughs> All right, now, uh, what is the name <laughs> of the largest part of a horse's body located between the withers and the tail? The core. The core. The core. For yeah. two hundred points, the core. Uh, we call it the barrel or the trunk. Mm, so the withers trunk. are essentially the the, t the tallest part of the shoulders, and then you have the backbone and the butt bone and such. So the the middle part there is the barrel or the trunk. Can you rank your favorite types of horses in looks? So you got like the white one that's covered in specks, yeah, I, I a black and white I, I horse, I or a completely that, brown horse. Yeah, I didn't ask you that question, Jim. It was uh, <laughs> what what is the term for a horse that has one color except for white markings on the face and legs? Mm. And what is the term he's for the horse's coat he's color the, that consists of a mix of white and any other color? He's a unity yeah. horse. Unity horse. Unity <laughs> okay. horse. Yeah, so maybe you can answer Jim's question too on that. Like, What's your favorite looking horse? When, when What horse do you go, oh, that's a good looker, and what one do you think is repulsive and ugly to you? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, my ultimate dream horse is an American Quarter horse, and I would like a blue roan, and they are a beautiful bluish gray color through and through. Uh, they they are fantastic looking horses. You can't so wear that dress on them though; it clash too much. <laughs> huh? You can't wear that outfit on top of the blue horse; it would clash too much. You got to do something that's complimentary. That I'll pick a different outfit that looks way better. I yeah, it's a pretty horse, American. Give me horse. a look at it. Give me yeah. a look at it. Ah, there you it's go. It's a blue horse, is it? I don't have the blue this one the there, blue but that's round. American. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, what do you yeah. Think? Look at that one. Okay. Oh, what, what do you think of Clydesdales? They're idiots, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I love Clydesdales. They're fantastic. Um, I, I definitely would have a Clydesdale in my pasture just because I do love them and I love big horses. Uh, they are very useful and they are universal, you know, to pulling carriages or they, they are rideables. I've seen some do dressage and things like that. They're can they cool. can they do jumping and stuff? Can they do the tricks? I'm sure they could. They are very heavy. So I don't think they'd be very good at it, but they'd sure give it a try. 
Hmm. Horses are cool, man. Mm -hmm. They I don't think they get enough credit. Like they. Uh, what do you mean they don't get enough credit? <laughs> I don't know. Like they, they have movies I, about yeah. them. War uh, horse. No, 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 I don't think they get enough. Tell they, me a movie that like you saw about all, war. They did pigeon. all this work, like in, in wars and traveling, and like you know. Yeah, they like, they like, helped us build the, the country before cars. Yeah, dragging stuff around. They drag stuff yeah. around. We 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 we've done it on the back of the they horse. They get some credit, but I feel like they we should get more credit. We got shit done, yeah. man. We got shit done. I'm just looking at pictures of them now. I'm like, they're cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Big fan. Nah. Horse girl over here. Yeah. What? You. Horse girl? <laughs> yeah. No, you pointed at me. Uh, Are you a horse girl? What's horse girl? He's a horse girl. You're a horse girl. A horse girl? Horse girl. Okay. I've dated that. a few horse girls in the day. What is a horse girl? Girls horse that like girls, horses. Yeah. Well, it's, why isn't it just people that like? <laughs> well, there it's like there's a there's a stereotype that the horse girl is like this girl who grew up in a rich family and is just like. Mm -hmm. Also, some of them are kind of, or those are horse girls that the two, gallop the on two, their own. The two horse girls I know legs. grew up in a rich family. Do you know this yeah. term, Anna? Horse girl? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I was waiting for it. So, a horse girl, you're <laughs> correct. Now, there, again, in my realm, there's two types of horse girls. There's the, I like both of them. You know, the, <laughs> Those are the ones who grew up in the rich families. They they have the, the very expensive tack and saddles and things like that. Or, uh, contrary to my looks today, there's the the, the ranchy and the, the called punchy horse girls. So we get down in the mud, we get down in the muck, we work, we we take care of our shit. We don't have the the sixty thousand dollar saddle. However, we can go and tend to you know what we need to tend to, and uh, we're handy, and uh, we just generally enjoy the lifestyle. Of what we do. I think the second girl is a lot better because uh, she. Uh you know, cleans up things and stuff. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like, it's like, you know what I mean? She's not yeah. like privileged. Yeah, no, yeah, no. She's not yeah, no. privileged, I mean. The privileged people are the worst. She's willing to get her hands dirty. But yeah. then if you marry him and their dad dies, you get no money. Mm -hmm. So that's a downer. <laughs> yeah. You got to weigh the pros and cons. Yeah, yeah. true. Um, but, but lots I, to consider, lots to consider. <laughs> I'm trying to think, like, Amos dated a real horse girl for a while. He dated, like, a girl who was like, that was a whole thing. The privileged one. Yeah. 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 And then, and yeah. then my friend Lisa Vanderpump is definitely a horse girl. Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Lisa, Lisa has two ponies in her backyard, right? She's, but she has them in the stables near where I used to live. And then she has stables near your house. My old house, yeah. And then she just goes and rides around the stables and then goes back to the ponies. Are I've, you familiar with Lisa Vanderpump, Anna? I've heard of her name. I'm not familiar with her. She's just right. one of the real housewives type of people. Yeah, she's I, once saw, I once saw Lisa Vanderpump talk to me and she fed an apple to a pony over her shoulder and she didn't break eye contact. <laughs> huh. okay. And she kept talking like it was nothing, and the animal just wandered into her like she was Snow White. <laughs> and then the animal just fucked off, and a swan walked by. <laughs> uh, I mean, horses are like big dogs, uh, essentially. If you have a really good minded, uh, well trained horse, they are big dogs. Uh, I, I go often, and when mine's laying down, I just go crawl on top of them and chill out for like five minutes. That, that's, my, that's my downtime. And it's Wait, you just the lay best. like with your head on his belly, or you get right on top of him. Like I'll put my head over, or I'll put his head over my shoulder, and I'll like snuggle up under him, and he'll just lay there like, "Hey, all right, it's our snuggle time. We're good." Oh wow! That's cool. and do you read a book, yeah. or what do you do? No, nope. I bit, sit there and you know, I just, just so that's my that's my time out. Yeah, bullshit. You look at your phone a bit, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you go. You go through. You go you through. Caught me, you caught you me. You go yeah. through the gram. Don't act like, like I just take it in. <laughs> me and the horse and the hay. And then you're like, who's? Why has Jenny been on holiday? Fuck her. <laughs> and did you mention before a sixty thousand dollars saddle? Is that what I heard? Sixty. <sighs> Some of the I, I threw out a number out. Ah, there. okay. I be surprised if tear the hair. I don't know about horses. I don't yeah. do English, so I have no clue. Yeah. You, don't, you don't do English. You're doing great. I ride western. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. What is a farrier? Tell us what a farrier is, uh, Anna. So a farrier, moi, uh, we are a specialized profession in the horse care world, and we make sure that the hooves are healthy, balanced, and that it serves the horse to the best of its abilities. Uh, we make sure that it's protected if needed, and we treat for any injuries or any infections that may occur. So one of my favorite things to do as a barrier are the rehabilitations and the corrections. Uh, you might have heard the term a founder force, which is when essentially the soft tissues inside of the foot um, are compromised 
and they basically let go of what's called the coffin bone and the coffin bone will literally like sink into the ground and you can have the bone come through the sole of the foot that is a that is a sinker founder horse and do the shoes actually do anything? Are they good or they found out that it's... Because I, I can't imagine putting nails into the feet of an animal. Like, it must help them. I don't know. I'm so glad you asked. Yeah. Um, I actually do not. Uh, I do not believe in, nor do I provide aluminum or steel shoes. I think that they compromise the foot more than they actually help because the nail holes will make room for infection and bacteria to grow and fester where it shouldn't. So my overall goal and objective is to keep the hoof as natural as possible. And I provide other forms of protection, such as um, composite shoes. I provide boots. I provide epoxy uh, covers. And yeah, we can get on this topic for eons. (laughs) You ever dipped in wax? That is coming, actually. It's called Form of Hoof, and uh, that is one of my newest endeavors. Haven't uh, gotten there yet. You get the patent on it quick. I feel like, <laughs> yeah. I, feel like I was... Uh... I was pulling at straws there. And yeah, I thought, I thought you were just making something up. No, but like, I yeah. thought that would be <laughs> oh, no, like a co- coating or something if you're going to dip them yeah. in something. Yeah, you dip them and coat. Yeah, that'd be good. I'm glad they're not doing the shoes. I always thought the shoes were stupid. Yeah, I'm with you. I didn't. I thought that did just everyone. And also them. now they can redesign the, the anvil. The anvil only had that bit at the end to wrap the shoes. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> what do you use for good luck, though? You got to catch it. Um, how I've o- never liked throwing the shoes around that stick. It's not fun. Yeah. <laughs> Corn, is, I'm, I'm, I'm never, I've never met anyone who yeah, enjoys it. And then also you have in your yard, you have a steel pole just <laughs> sticking out. Yeah. Now, you know what's funny? I've hurt myself on a horseshoe pole like when I was a kid. I yeah, like, yeah. just ran into it. Oh, like yeah, a you rebar trip over, you'll bloody yeah. die like a yeah, rebar yeah. sticking out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> Terrible. Straight through the neck. Cornhole's way better. Yeah, <laughs> just do cornhole. Um, how often should a horse's hose be trimmed by a farrier? Jim says every three months. Three months. Uh, the the industry standard, uh, the accepted time frame is about six weeks, and I also disagree with that um, because yeah, I have going. found if I have found that my own um, systems methods and programs they do better on a four week schedule, mm. and mm. that's because I can keep the foot in line with how I need it to grow better instead of just excess wall growing out and messing up my whole my whole vision you're not like a mechanic who says i need to get my car serviced every 500 miles though are you <laughs> i mean sure that could come off that way uh however in the thick of it when you're looking at it the shorter cycles really do help uh, especially in the spring and the summer when the growth patterns are um you know, accelerated because the grasses are coming into a change and they're more potent with nutrition mm. so it could it could throw everything off. Just a week can throw everything off um, from what I've experienced. Mm. And what material makes up a horse's hoof? Is it cartilage and fingernails? Jim, get that right? Or not another? I don't think so. Sort of. So it, it's primarily keratin. Um, the mm. the majority of a hoof is keratin. So there are some other components in there um, that are equivalent to our human cuticles. Uh, but just for public sake, we're going to say keratin. Huh, okay. Do you ever gussy up one of the hoofs by painting different things on it and putting like a little diamante thing on it like women do? No. Uh, oh. I don't have time for that. No. Well, I'm just saying if you want to expand no. this business, I'm gonna, I'll take the name if you don't want it. Gussy up hoofs. Um, yes. And what type of diet should a horse be eating to maintain hoof health? Is it spinach? Spinach. <laughs> it is not spinach, but good, good try. Um, so horses, um, they their bodies are designed to forage. Um, in the wild, there's not somebody handing them a, a bucket of grain twice a day. You know, they they are going. They're picking on the grasses that suit them. They're picking on the the weeds that suit them. So in captivity, we like to, I like to keep them on a forage based diet. And what that looks like is low starch and low sugar, ideally. And that gets really hard in the spring and summer because when that growth pattern is happening, the sugars are going crazy. And, you know, we call it laminitis season because it's, it's rampant. And laminitis is when the interior of the hoof wall is compromised and you go into that founder. 
Um, so yeah, get me back on track because I'm about to go off on a tangent. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We don't do that on this show. We try to keep Very everything focused. Focus, Are you focus. for? <laughs> um, all right, so uh, now is the part the time of our show we do. Uh, Wait, tip- just before I quickly, who do you reckon was the first bloke to just look at a horse and think, I'll get on that thing's back? Do you reckon that was <laughs> pretty soon after seeing the first horse, or do you reckon that took thousands of years? I think that like, none of like them were the broken. Spanish people would have already seen that. I assume the Native Americans were already riding on the back of horses by the time mm-hmm. the Spanish got here. So I assume that it's going to be, it would have been a Native American, right? I don't know, maybe the Asia, maybe the... The wasn't like Genghis Khan and all them running. Yeah, but he the, he got the horses already from America. I have they no come clue. from North America. Genghis yeah. Khan didn't get the bloody first horses. What are you talking about? I don't know anything. I don't being, know. Anything you're being things. ridiculous now. Yeah, <laughs> I'm an idiot. Yeah. Um, I reckon it would have been few weeks. After yeah, I don't think. I don't think it would. Yeah, I don't want to be in the first long. day. I reckon he would have been like this. I'm gonna eat that. There'd be like ten of them, and this bloke would be like this. I can't ride that one. That one yeah, over there'd there. be one that like reckon, trusted the humans and reckon, stuck around. I reckon that one over there. I reckon I could ride him. I reckon that <laughs> happened. What do you think, Forrest? Join the conversation. I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't. I don't think. I don't think it happened. I think that maybe it happened right away, and then someone got on one and got bucked, and they yeah. were like, "Yeah, fuck that." Then years and years and years and years <laughs> passed before someone tried it again. <laughs> yeah, because yeah, there was none domesticated. They're all like, they "My dad want- can break horses in though, but he's yeah. doing it with a saddle and he." Yeah, I'm you, sure you need reins because the first bloke would have just been holding onto the neck here. <laughs> yeah. 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 yeah, that would have been good. Yeah, yeah just yeah. squeezing with your legs, trying to stay on. Yeah, yeah, you're not staying on. Going bareback, you're done. Yeah. Um, this is part of our show called Dinner Party Facts. We ask our expert to give us one fact, something obscure, interesting that our audience can use to impress people about the subject. What do you have for us on horses, Anna? So during the the foaling process, uh, there has to be natural protection for the mother and what the hooves uh, are called uh, during the birthing process is called a foal slipper and these foal slippers they are extremely soft and they have little fingerling appendages um, that are underneath so when they touch air for the first time the tissue starts to convert into that that hard keratin uh, hoof that we see today so, um, yeah, it's pretty interesting to, to feel and, and touch a full slipper. It's oh. very cool. Yeah, I never thought that. Because yeah. cool, yeah. <laughs> they couldn't be born with those hooves. That would be painful. Yeah. yeah. So that just hardens. It starts hardening as soon as it touches the air. Huh? That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's all soft and malleable. I want to I wanna touch one. It's gross. <laughs> oh, I thought it was be cool. <laughs> no, it's, the thing's cool. You touching it's gross. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> I, Anna, I want to touch one of the young young horses. <laughs> I didn't say it like I that. I said, that, "Hey, that sounds cool." I want that young want, horse. Anna said it's cool. <laughs> where, where, where it hasn't even touched the air yet. <laughs> um, all right, Anna Wolf. Thank you for being here. You can touch find it. <laughs> no, nope, I'm doing doing the outro. Yeah, Anna, I even had the air. You can find Anna Wolf on Instagram at Kiss the Ponies, and then also check out the Facebook page for Three Stacks Farms. Um, and you can, I guess you got you can. That's where you work, right? You can bring the horses there, and uh, I own the Three Stacks Farms uh, LLC. That's what I run my ferry business under. So. And it's oh, in Cheneyville, Louisiana. Correct? Am I saying that right? Yes. So if you have a horse and you live in near Chaningville, Louisiana, go visit Anna Wolf. And if, oh, you, if, if, you if you're five it. miles away, ride your horse over there. The horse will appreciate 15 it. Fifteen miles away. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just yeah. well, make sure the hooves are good. Or horse, check the it horse out. will appreciate yeah. it. Yeah. Um, this is one of those young ones with the soft, <laughs> soft, <laughs> soft, <laughs> soft hooves. Uh, all right, Anna. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it so much. Anna, you were a blast. Thank you so much for being on the show. Thank you. I, I enjoy, you are too. Thank I enjoy so your energy. You're very fun. Um, okay, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, if you're ever at a party and someone comes up to you and goes, you know, a horse that gets its balls cut off is called a filly, go, oh, I don't know about that, and walk away. Well, trot away. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> it was young hoofs. All right. Good night, Australia. <laughs>